Hello YouTube, and welcome to the Ultimate Wanderer Guide. This guide seeks to be a full and in-depth guide about Wanderer's kits, teams, and how to build him, so your one-stop shop for all Wanderer information. So I wanted to do a more up-to-date guide for his rerun. I also have a written version of this guide, which will be linked in the description and probably the pinned comment as well. Wanderer is a 5-star Anemo Catalyst user. His primary purpose is to be used as an on-field DPS, doing the vast majority of his team's damage through his normal and charged attacks as well as his burst. For his pros and cons, his pros are, he has an extremely high damage potential, he is excellent in both single target and AoE, his normal attacks have the farthest range in the entire game, he's excellent in multi-wave due to this range, the vertical range on his attacks makes him great against flying and mobile enemies. He's not reliant on elemental reactions, which allows him to not have issues against enemies with innate auras like the Thunder Manifestation. He has no hit lag, which means he can take full advantage of attack speed buffs. He has excellent constellations, which makes him a great unit to invest vertically into. And his best supports, including his dedicated support, are 4 star units. As for his cons, he has a complete lack of poise, which can make him a bit hard to play without a shielder. His potential is heavily locked behind having a C6 Farazan. He's reliant on high investment into his talents and artifacts since he's a hyper carry. And his supports will often have high energy requirements, like Bennett, Yunjin, and Farazan, for an example. Now let's go over Wanderer's talents. His normal attack is pretty straightforward. He throws Wind Blades at his opponents to deal AoE and Nemo damage from a very good range. As mentioned in the pros and cons sections, the range on these attacks is excellent both vertically and horizontally, so we can easily hit enemies even if they are flying and moving around. This is very useful against a lot of bosses that are common in the Abyss, such as Wolf Lord, PMA, and Thunder Manifestation. As for his elemental skill, his skill is one of the biggest parts of his kit. Not only does it make his normal and charged attacks deal much higher damage and give them better AoE, but it also allows him to fly. Being able to fly comes with a variety of benefits, such as being able to move around while attacking, which is excellent for maneuverability, but also being out of reach for a lot of enemies' attacks. Furthermore, he uses a special form of stamina during his skill, and his charged attacks do not consume this special form of stamina, so he's able to constantly use his charged attacks without worrying about stamina management like most other characters. He starts with the 100 points, which makes his total skill duration about 10 seconds if you don't spend any extra points for things like sprinting or flying higher. As for his elemental burst, this is another powerful part of his kit. It deals 5 consecutive instances of AoE and Nemo damage. It can be used at the start of his field time for front loaded damage or at the end of his field time for back loaded damage. Using it at the end of his field time will make him land. We recommend bursting at the very end of his skill state when all of his points are just about used up. As for his passives, his Ascension 1 passive is a crucial part of his kit, giving him access to 4 different buffs based on the elements you use with him. These buffs will be applied based on his skill making direct contact with these elements. That aura can be on either yourself or the enemy. Of these buffs, Cryo is the most powerful, providing him with a 20% crit rate, but tends to be the most difficult to reliably get. Pyro provides him with 30% attack, which is the second most powerful, and is by far the easiest to get, thanks to Bennett applying self pyro art to you. Hydro isn't very good offensively, since using the extra build time from the extra 20 points it gives you will usually cause some of your buffs to wear out. However, it can be very good defensively, using those extra 20 points to fly higher to avoid most if not all enemy attacks, or just to use for an extra dash to dodge. Electro provides him with energy when he performs normal attacks. This is the least useful since Rondor already has very low energy requirements and it can usually burst every rotation even without building any energy recharge at all. However, it can be nice for allowing you to burst earlier into your rotation if desired or to allow you to still burst every rotation even if you're using the Shimanara set as your artifact set. As for his Ascension 4 passive, this is a very useful passive, and you can use it either defensively or offensively. 
Defensively, you can simply hold on to it until you need to dodge an attack, as this will let you dodge for free and get in some decent damage while doing so. Offensively, you can use this as an active part of your rotation, using it as much as you can for the damage. In normal attack combos, this will usually result in more DPS than just spamming your normal attacks. Now let's talk about his constellations. Wanderer has some of the best constellations in the entire game for a 5 star DPS unit, making him an excellent pick for a unit to invest vertically into. If you are looking to go beyond C0 and want a good early stopping point, C2 is the sweet spot for this. C1 and C3 are also good stopping points, but C2 is generally the sweet spot. If you get all of his best constellations, then you'll want to get to C6. Now, his C1 gives him an extra 10% attack speed and also increases the scaling of his ascension far passive. The attack speed is great because, as mentioned, he has no hit lag, so he benefits fully from this attack speed buff. The extra damage to his A4 is also pretty nice as it increases his damage by about 58%. So overall, Wanderer C1 increases his damage from C0 by about 8%. Now with C2, Wanderer gains damage bonus to his burst every time he spends points from his skill. This goes up to 200% damage bonus, and it is extremely easy to max out on, as it will already be at the full 200% about 5 seconds into his fill time. 200% damage bonus is a pretty outrageous number, and this results in the damage from his Barst quite literally being doubled, if not more than that, turning his Barst into an absolutely massive backloaded noob. The only downside of this is that you will not be able to get the buff if you use his Barst before his skill, so you can no longer front load the damage at C2 if you want to get the max amount of damage. But overall, the cumulative increase from C0 to C2 is about 23%. C3 simply increases the talent level by 3. This is quite nice to have right after C2, since it scales nicely with the damage bonus from the C2. Overall, the cumulative increase from C0 to C3 is about 28%. Now, C4 is tricky since it's RNG. Basically, what it does is, when he uses skill, he'll gain an extra buff from his A1 passive, one that he doesn't already have. This could be absolutely incredible if you get the Cryo buff, since it's going to be a massive DPS increase. If you only have one Ascension 1 buff, then you have a 1 in 3 chance of getting a Cryo if you're trying to aim for Cryo to get the maximum DPS increase. If you have 2, the chance becomes 1 in 2. So, if you want to reset the chamber to get the Cryo buff, you might want to bring a Hydro or Electro unit with you to increase the chances. But overall, if we average this, this and you get the Cryo buff every 1 out of 3 rotations, C0 to C4 is a cumulative increase of about 34%. C5 is simple, just increasing your skill level by 3. It's the smallest increase we have seen so far, but it's still pretty nice nonetheless. C0 to C5 is an increase of about 39%. Finally, we have C6, which is by far Wanderer's best constellation, and easily one of the best C6 of any 5 star in the entire game. How this constellation works is, during the duration of Wanderer's skill, his normal attacks will deal an additional instance of Anemo damage, with scaling equal to 40% of the corresponding normal attack scaling. Furthermore, these extra attacks will give Wanderer a 100% chance to have his Ascension far passive up after every in 3 combo, thus allowing you to use his A4 twice as much as before for even more damage. All of these extra attacks will also give Wanderer an absolutely ridiculous amount of Nemo application, will allow you to very quickly break enemy shields on his own. Additionally, each time Wanderer falls below 40 points from his skill, he will restore 4 of them up to 5 times, which basically results in an extra 23 points. Which is the same as his Hydro A1 buff, allowing him to stay in his skill and deal damage for longer, or give him room to fly higher or dodge more. Overall, going from C0 to C6 is about a 75% DPS increase. Wanderer's energy requirements are generally very low, with 100% to 111%, typically being enough ER to burst every rotation. Energy recharge calculators will reflect more than this, however this isn't reflective of what you actually need in game. This is for several reasons. The first is, in the Abyss, you will usually be generating more particles than what is reflected in energy recharge calculators, especially in AoE. Even if you don't have enough energy to burst for a second rotation, if you have a well-built team, you're likely going to be able to finish off the chamber before actually needing to burst for a second time. 
Furthermore, you can alternate between using his burst at the start of his field time and at the end of his field time to kind of cheat his energy requirements, allowing him to get two rotations worth of energy for the second burst. So not look for a third rotation, but if you need a third rotation, you're again likely not going to need your burst to finish off the chamber anyway. And using your burst every 2-3 rotations is still likely better than running a high amount of ER. With Wanderer's artifacts, for his main stats, you'll always want an attack percent sands. You'll always want an anemo percent goblet. For the circlet, you'll always want crit damage or crit rate. As for substats, your number one priority will always be crit, as this will result in the biggest damage increase. But do keep in mind that if you have too many crit rate substats, then you can end up overcapping. Attack percent doesn't give as much damage as crit, but it's still very good to have. And then lastly, energy recharge. Again, Wanderer really doesn't need much of any energy recharge, and crit and attack percents are the only substats you should actually be prioritizing on Wanderer. However, having some ER doesn't hurt as long as it's not coming at the expense of crit or attack. Now for your artifact sets. The main set you'll want to be using is Desert Pavilion Chronicles. This is his best set by about 8 to 11 percent. Using any of the other sets below, you should only be doing so temporarily until you get a good DPC set. An alternative set you can use is Echoes of an Offering. If you're using Wanderer's signature weapon, Echoes is likely going to be his second best set. It might not be worth using if your ping is higher than about 100. Do also note that with how the Echo set works, it is very hard to accurately calculate. So in practice, it could be either better or worse than shown in my calcs. Also note that if you have Wanderer at C6, it becomes his best set depending on how low your ping is. Another alternative set you can use is Shemenara's. SR can be a better alternative to DPC than Echoes if you have higher ping, or if you aren't using Wanderer's signature weapon. However, if you have Wanderer at Constellation 2 or higher, SR may not be ideal since you really want to burst every rotation once you get to C2. With Wanderer's weapons, his best weapon is going to be his signature weapon. I do not know how to pronounce it, so I'm just going to call it TR for short. And his second best weapon is going to be Lost Prayers. Lost Prayers has the highest crit rate of any catalyst, and a decent amount of damage per cent, which makes it his second best weapon overall. However, since Wanderer ascends with crit rate, it can be difficult to avoid overcapping on crit rate with it. Woodsith is generally going to be his third best option, as well as his best 4 star weapon. Its passive is RNG, and its cooldown means you will only have its passive up every 2 out of 3 rotations. However, even with that accounted for, an R5 Woodsith will still be his third best weapon. With Wanderer's combos, there are 5 main combos you want to consider doing. The first one is N3 in 2D. This combo aims to maximize the damage from his ascension for a passive. After every other N2, aka N3 in 2D, you'll be guaranteed to have his Aether up. This will usually be the highest DPS combo if you're using either TR or using Yunjin. N3 spam. Spamming his N3 without doing dash cancels will be his easiest combo. It will usually be a bit less DPS than actively implementing the AFR dashes, but on the other hand, it allows you to hold on to them to dodge, which can be very useful defensively if you're playing without a shield or. N2C is usually the highest DPS combo if you aren't using TR or Yunjin. Actively implementing the AFR dashes will usually result in a bit more DPS than just doing N2C without the dashes but it is harder to do the dashes when you're using charged attacks. Charged attack spam is the most difficult and least advisable combo on Wanderer. Luxia spam also means you can't run characters that require normal attacks to trigger, such as Toma and Yelan. On the other hand, CA spam does have the best AoE of all his combos. His normal attacks do have good AoE, the charged attacks just have a bit better AoE, and they're also a bit better at stun locking enemies, which can also be useful. Lastly, we have the Hummingbird combo in 3D. This is a C6 exclusive combo. At C6, he's guaranteed to have his A flop up to every N3. This will maximize his DPS. When it comes to Wanderer's team structure, you will always want a Constellation 6 Faros on. She provides the highest amount of buffing possible from a single character, while also providing off-field particle generation and crowd control. Your third slot will almost always want to be Bennett. Bennett provides a massive attack buff plus heal wound, 
But in addition to that, his self pyro application is also excellent for allowing you to easily get Wanderer's Pyro A1, even if you have a different element on the enemy. This makes him nearly irreplaceable on a Wanderer team. Micah is included as an alternative to Bennett, though. But he's only a good alternative if your fourth slot is Yunjin. This is because in the rotation with Yunjin, you are able to get Cryo in addition to Micah's attack speed buff. However, Bennett is still advised over Micah, because with the Bennett rotation, you will get Crystallized, which can help prevent you from getting interrupted. And as for your fourth slot, this slot is very flexible. You'll want to use either another buffer, a shielder, or a sub DPS. First, we have Yunjin. She's the most popular unit for this slot, and for good reason. Her buffs significantly increase Wanderer's damage output. Since she is Geo, she is also capable of creating crystallized shields, which can help prevent you from getting interrupted, allowing her to act as a mini shielder. This will usually only help prevent you from getting interrupted by like two attacks, but that is very often all you actually need. The main downside to using Yunjin is that you use up her stacks very quickly in AoE, which can make her inferior to some of the other options in those AoE scenarios. Next option is Rosaria. It may be weird to see her classified as a buffer and not a sub DPS, but this is because the amount of buffing you get from using her is greater than the amount of damage she does. Rosaria's rapid cryo application allows you to easily get Wanderer's Cryo A1, even with Bennett's 2U pyro application. This, combined with her own crit rate buff, will result in Wanderer gaining an extra 32 to 35% crit rate, which is absolutely massive. If you overcap on crit rate, her value starts to go down quite a bit. Another great option is Jean, but you really want to have her at at least C4. With C4, she will provide 40% anemo resistance shred and 15% attack speed, both which will underwear benefits greatly from. Her Sunfire combo with Bennett is also incredible at breaking enemy shields. Her main downsides are, as mentioned, that you really want to have her at at least C4, which can be hard to obtain, especially since she's a standard banner character. Also, that the resistance shred is removed if enemies aren't inside the field of her burst. Lastly, for the buffer slot, we have Klee at Constellation 2 or higher. She can be an excellent buffer. With C2, she'll provide 23% defense shred, thrilling tails, and pyro resonance, while only taking like a second to fill time. This can result in her being overall the highest DPS option for the fourth slot. But she may not be very practical since her defense shred is reliant on her bomb hitting enemies. And if you don't have her at C2, then she's just not worth using. It's because pre-C2, all she's providing is Thrilling Tales and Pyro Resonance. Layla is an excellent option because she has a very strong shield, she's Cryo, and she provides some small buffing with her C4. This makes her overall the highest DPS option out of all the shielders. Her only issue is that learning how to rotate with her to ensure you get Wanderer's Cryo A1 can be a bit rough to get used to. Next we have Toma. Toma makes an excellent pick because he provides very high shielding uptime, pyro resonance, and decent buffing from his C6. Since you will have double pyro with him, Bennett's energy requirements will be much lower. He is behind Layla in DPS, but his ease of use and unique shielding mechanic makes him an excellent pick. Now at C4, Yanfei's burst will create a pretty strong shield. She is Pyro, so she will get Pyro Resonance plus better ER requirements for Bennett, just like Toma. She's also a Catalyst, so she can provide Thrilling Tales as well. This makes her overall the second highest DPS shield option for Wanderer, just behind Layla. The problem is, using her Burst every rotation will basically be impossible unless you are in a high particle AoE situation, but you will still get all the buffs she provides every rotation. Dia is technically not a shielder, but she still fills the same purpose of providing interruption resistance. The infinite interruption resistance buff she provides only lasts 9 seconds, but this is plenty enough for Wanderer. It takes about 12 to 13 seconds of fill time. The last 2 seconds are in an iframe for his burst if you choose to backload it. Since Dia's interruption resistance lasts a flat 9 seconds, you don't need to worry about anything breaking with her like you do with shielders. Dia is Pyro, so like Yanfei and Toma, she provides Pyro Resonance and better energy requirements for Bennett. She can also provide a small attack buff by running her on a pure EM build with the Aquamarine Claymore, which is going to be the highest DPS way to use her. Next, we have Zhongli. Zhongli has the strongest shield in the game by far, and he is very easy to use, but he falls behind most of the other shielders in terms of DPS. This is because 
his resistance shred isn't as valuable when Farazan already provides 30%. However, if you are facing enemies with higher anemo resistance, his value goes up a lot. Lastly, we have Xinyan. Xinyan, despite having the benefits of being Pyro, is actually the lowest DPS option out of all the shielders. However, her fast AoE Pyro application plus wielding a Claymore makes her excellent at breaking enemy shields. So if you are in a situation where you need both a shielder and a great shield breaker at the same time, Xinyan makes an excellent pick for that. Kazuha and Venti both make excellent options as a sub DPS for the fourth slot. They deal high AoE and Nemo damage, thanks to being buffed by Farazan, and great crowd control as well. Kazuha is able to front load more damage than Venti, especially at C1, but he has higher energy requirements and longer field time. Venti overall will usually deal more damage than Kazuha, and he lowers Bandit's energy requirements as well. But his crowd control can sometimes be inferior to Kazuha's, depending on the enemies you're facing. Faisal is excellent if you want a single target DPS. Wanderer is excellent at driving Faisal's A4 and C6, and she will be buffed by Bennett, so she will deal very high damage. You will get Electro A1 with her, which can be useful for bursting earlier into your field time for a faster clear time in some scenarios. It is also useful for reducing the amount of RNG at C4. If you have Faisal on the 5 star weapon like Aqua Simulacar or Polar Star, she can actually result in overall higher single target DPS than Yunjin, but you won't get the crystals that you do with Yunjin, so keep that in mind. Yelan is also a great option for a single target DPS. Yelan comes with some decent buffing, and her Hydro application will allow Bennett to use Freedom Swan for even more buffing if you have it. You will also have her Hydro A1 for added defensive utility. However, she will deal a lot less damage than Faisal here. Song Link is a strong sub DPS for both AoE and single target. Because she is Pyro, she also provides the utility that comes with that. Since she has no ICD, she is also excellent for breaking enemy shields. Do note, however, that you won't usually have time to funnel particles to her, so she will need very high energy recharge. The last option we have for a sub DPS is Bido. Bido X is an AoE sub DPS and a mini shielder with her C1, usually able to take about 1 to 2 hits for you. Her damage reduction is also excellent at preventing you from getting one shot against powerful enemies. She's Electro, so she will provide you with the utility that comes with Electro A1 as well. As solo Electro, she has very high energy recharge requirements, so you may want to use her on Favonius. The main reasons you'd want to use Bido is in a scenario where you need Electro, such as the giant Dorito bars but you also need added defensive utility, so in those scenarios, you might want to consider using Bido, but outside of those scenarios, there's usually going to be better options to pick. Now as for teams without a Constellation 6 Farozan, Wanderer's team building can change up a bit. She is still good before C6, as long as you have her at at least C2. However, you can alternatively just opt not to use her. Her value is a lot lower before C6, and she can be replaced with other options that can give you similar or better performance than her. Now I want to go over some rotation tips with Wanderer. Tip number one is whether you should use his charged attack before or after his skill. So the DPC set requires you to perform a charged attack to activate its passive. So even if you are doing a normal attack combo, you still need to perform at least one charged attack. Generally speaking, you'll want to use the charged attack before using your skill. But if you're using something like the Wood Sith, then you'll want to do it after so that your backloaded burst can get the Wood Sith buff. You'll also want to do it after if using any characters that take a bit of build time after Bennett's burst, so the characters like Kazuha, Jonkling, or Rosaria, for example. Tip number two is going to be to fly higher. So, playing Wanderer without a shield can be difficult if you are facing very aggressive enemies. You can increase Wanderer's flying kite by pressing the jump button. Doing this just one time will put him out of reach for most enemies' attacks, but it will come at the cost of about 20 points slash 2 seconds of fill time. With the reduced skill uptime, will cause you to miss out on some damage, it can be better than getting interrupted. When pressing the jump button to fly higher, you can cut the animation short by attacking during it. This will let you start dealing your damage faster, but it will result in your flying height not being as high as it could have been, so some attacks may still hit you. 
I guess enemies that will still hit you if you do the cancel, such as concentrated beasts. You will want to ensure that you let the full flying animation play out before attacking so that you can get the full height. Now tip number 3 is going to be about rotating with Layla. As mentioned earlier, the rotations with Layla can be difficult to adapt to, but once you understand the rotations, you should be able to adapt to them with enough practice. For a longer and more detailed explanation on how to rotate with Layla, you can watch the video I did showing in-depth rotation guide with Layla. Tip number 4 is going to be regarding funneling Farozan's particles. So depending on the scenario you are in, you can find some of your supports coming up a bit short on energy. This can be mitigated by adjusting your rotation to have Farozan funnel her Favonius particle procs to the party member that's currently coming up short, and this can even be herself. Tip number 5 is going to be about making Farozan's burst last 2 rotations. So Farozan's energy requirements to burst every rotation can be very high if you do not have her at C6 yet. However, this can be worked around by effectively making her buffs from one burst last across two rotations instead of one. This is made possible because at C2, Farozan's total buff uptime is about 22 seconds. By using her later into the rotation rather than sooner, you will still have a buff up from most of Wanderer's field time for the second rotation without actually needing to cast her burst again. This allows you to cheat around her massive energy requirements since she will be getting two rotations worth of energy per burst rather than one. While you will have a couple of combos that don't get Farozan's buff on the second rotation, this is still much better than not having her buff up during the second rotation at all due to not having energy. Tip number 6 is going to be about rotating with Micah and Yunjin. So when you're using Micah instead of Bennett and using Yunjin as your 4th slot, you'll want to make sure that you use Micah after Yunjin rather than before her. This is because Micah's skill applies 1U Cryo, while Yunjin applies 2U Geo on both her skill and burst, so her skill alone will already fully remove the Cryo after he applied it, and Micah has no means of reapplying the Cryo once it's gone. The last thing I want to talk about is using Wanderer for speedrunning. Wanderer is one of the best speedrunning units in the entire game, even across multiple different investment levels, while also being one of the most accessible units for this. Speedrun competitions are usually categorized by gold costs, which is basically how many 5 stars a team has, which includes both characters, weapons, and the refinements and constellations. Wanderer does not need any other 5 star units on his team. Because of this, he can easily fit into different speedrun categories while still running a fully optimal team. Even when competing at a Constellation 6 level, Wanderer is consistently able to keep up with and very often beat a Constellation 6 Yelan, and C6 Yelan is known for being an absolute monster at speedrunning, completely dominating the competition, at least until Wanderer came out. But yeah, if you guys liked today's video, be sure to give a like and subscribe. Also be sure to check out the written guide as well, which I will have linked in the pinned comment in the description. And yeah, also please feel free to leave a comment letting me know your thoughts. Thanks. Bye.